What's up YouTube, it's Mace here, and today I'm gonna be showing you guys a full OBS tutorial for beginners. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show why you should use OBS Studio instead of Streamlabs OBS or Stream Elements OBS. The second thing is I'm gonna show you guys all the settings that you need for recordings and streamings for the best performance and quality. I'm also gonna show how to set up scenes, sources, do your audio, pretty much every single thing you need to start streaming or recording it today but before we get into that make sure you guys drop a like on this video subscribe down below and turn on that little post notification bell and other than that let's get right into the video now the first thing i'm going to be talking about is why you should download obs studio the answer is pretty simple it's straight up just the performance now if you are running a dual pc setup you can use any program really but for most people that are probably watching this youtube video including myself are using only one computer and obs studio is going to use the least amount of CPU usage. It's only going to do around 10 to 15% of CPU usage rather than Streamlabs OBS or Stream Elements OBS using 20 to 50%. And it's pretty important because you're probably going to have Spotify running in the background, some type of music. You're going to have a game running. You're going to have your recording or streaming program running. So you're going to have a bunch of different applications open and you want to make sure that you're not lagging. So the viewer is happy pretty much. So I recommend downloading OBS studio all you do is go to obsproject.com and then you download on whatever platform you're on so for me i'm on windows and then it's a pretty straightforward install process so i'm going to let you guys go ahead and do that and so now once you guys are on obs studio you should see something along these lines and the first thing i'm going to be showing you guys is all the settings you need for your recordings or streams so all you're going to want to do is go down here to controls and click on settings for general you shouldn't have to change that many things but for me under output Output, I like to change the confirmation dialog when starting or stopping streams. So instead of accidentally clicking start or stop on your OBS, it's going to pop up with a confirm dialog that you actually want to start your stream. And then for stream, you're going to select whichever platform you want to stream on. So for me, it's Twitch. And then you're just going to connect your account. And so you're just going to type in your username and password, and then you should be logged in and good to go. And then your OBS should show up like this now. And then it's going to give you your stream information and then your chat but we're going to go over that a little bit later so i'm just going to close these for now the next thing we're going to go over is the output so under output you should see output mode at the top and you're going to want to change this to advanced immediately simple mode doesn't really give you that many options to choose from so you want to change that to advanced so for streaming you just keep your audio track to one and then for your encoder if you have a gpu you want to change it to that immediately it's a lot Lot more optimized and your cpu is probably going to be doing a lot more work if you're like browsing on the internet having spotify open you know stuff like that it really adds up over time and then for rate control you keep this to cbr and then for bit rate this is based off your internet so for every 10 megabits you have you want to give it 3000 bit rate which is the third bit rate is pretty important instead of looking all grainy and stuff you have to really crank up your bit rate twitch recommends 6000 bit rate for 1080p streams which is what I'm going to get you guys to do as well. For the keyframe, I would set to two. For the preset, I would either do max quality or quality. Like I said before, you really want to make sure that your viewers are happy with the quality of the stream. For the profile, I would set to high. For look ahead, I would turn off. You don't really need that. If you have visual tuning, I would try to keep this on, but this is really based off your GPU. I would say if you have a 2060 or up, you should be completely fine. And then for GPU, keep that to zero. And then for max B frame, you set that to two and so once you have all this complete you just click apply and then for under recording you keep the type to standard and then for the recording path you just change it to wherever you like to save your files for the recording format you just keep it to mp4 the audio track just set to one the encoder you keep that to your gpu once again and then you don't touch rescale output or the custom muxer settings and then for the rate control i would set to variable bit rate since you're not using your internet for recording i would really try to bump this up as much as possible so change it to variable 
variable bit rate. And then for the bit rate, I would set to 12,000 and then the max bit rate to 25,000. And then for the keyframe, I would set to two. And then all the other settings are the same, just like in streaming. So for preset, max quality, profile, high, visual tuning, check, and then max B frame set to two. And then you should be good to go. Just click apply. And then under audio, we don't touch any of these. If it gave you desktop or microphone audio, just click disable. We're gonna sub the audio a different way I prefer. And then for under video, you'd wanna keep your base and output resolution to 1080p. For the downscale filter, you keep that two by cubic. And then the common FPS value to 60. And then obviously click apply. And then if you'd like to do hotkeys, such as starting or stopping your stream, you can set that up here. So you just click on this box and then you just press whatever keys you like. So you can do control shift enter or whatever you want. But for me, I don't really need to do this because I have a stream deck. And then finally for advanced, you wanna change your process priority to above normal to make sure that the quality will stay good. And then for the renderer, you wanna keep that to direct 11, the color format in V12, the color space 709, the color range full, and then everything else should be completely fine. So you're good to go in here, just click apply. And then that's all you have to do for the settings portion. Now to set up the scene sources in your audio, if you like different scenes, which is pretty much having one scene set to a full face cam. And then if you wanna change to your gameplay and then your webcam on the corner or something along those lines, you can just click on the different scene and then it should be good to go. To add a scene, just click on this plus and then you can enter the scene name, but for me, I'm just going to keep it as scene two. And so now you have two different scenes and then you can add how many ever scenes you like. Or for me, I'm just going to show two scenes for this tutorial. And then for under sources, I'm going to go ahead and set up your guys's audio. So you just click on this plus and then you click on audio input capture and then you can name it whatever you like. And then it should pop up with something like this. So you're just going to go ahead and click on your microphone and then click OK. And then you're going to click add again and then click on audio output capture, name it whatever you would like. And then audio output capture is going to be your desktop audio pretty much and what people can hear in the game or your music so i'm going to click on the arctic 7 game headphones and then i'm going to click ok and so now as you can see in the audio mixer i have two different captures one being my microphone and then the other being the desktop and then if your microphone isn't the greatest we can set up some filters right now to make sure that it sounds good so all you're going to need to do is click on this gear icon and then click on filter and then the first filter we're going to add is compressor and then we're not going to change anything these are pretty good settings that it gives you right off the bat and then the next one we're going to add is gain now for the gain it's going to be up to your microphone so if you're not peeking in the high yellows or in the red i would add some decibels to make sure that everyone can hear you nice and loud and clear and then the next thing we're going to add is a limiter and then you're going to set this to negative three decibels what a limiter does it pretty much prevents the destruction of your eardrums. So you really want to make sure that you have this set. And then finally, we're going to add a noise gate and then the settings that it gives you are pretty good. So you don't really want to change that. And then that's pretty much all you have to do for the audio filters on your microphone. And so now once you have your audio set up, you're just going to want to left click on your audio input and then control left click on your audio output. And then you're going to right click and then group the selected items. And then you're going to name this folder audio. And so now with this folder, all you have to do is is copy it and then go into the other scenes and then click paste and so now you should have your audio on different scenes and the reason why i like setting up the audio through this way is because if you don't want the desktop audio on a certain scene or if you don't want your music audio or whatever you want you can just click on this little eyeball and as you can see it's completely gone rather than having to go into settings and then clicking disable i think it saves some time and so now if you want to do a display capture you just go under sources and click plus and then click on display capture name it whatever you want and so now as you guys can see it is getting my full display pretty much if you want to show your streams or recording whatever you like you can do that right here and then if you want to capture a game you just click on add and then game capture and then as you can see it can capture any full screen application or capture a specific window i like doing a specific window because for some reason obs doesn't pick up some games so if you just do a capture a specific window and then you just 
just click on the game that you're playing. And then if you want to add some type of image to your screen, maybe like a small overlay for your camera or your logo in a corner or something along those lines, all you do is click add and then a image. And then you just browse for the image that you want to add. And so now, as you guys can see, my logo is added to the scene and then you can scale anything up or down. And then if you would like to crop something, you can just alt click on one of these squares. And then as you can see, it crops the image and then you can do this for whatever you want. So like, for example, if I want to do this display, I can just do alt click. And then as you can see, it crops it out. And if you mess up or something along those lines, you can just click control Z. And as you can see, it goes back to normal. And then if you want to redo something, you just click control shift Z. And as you can see, it's redoing what I did. And then for your sources, it's a layer type of deal. So if you ever use Photoshop, if I move my image under my display, it's going to be hidden because the display capture layer is above. So you want to make sure that your image or whatever you want is above the capture device. And then the image slideshow is pretty much the same deal like the image, except obviously it's a slideshow of images. And then for a media source, instead of an image just sitting on your screen, you can have something plain. And then if you want to add some text on the screen, you can just click on text and then you can select whatever font you have on your computer. And then you just type the text out right here. And as you can see, it works completely fine. And then you can change the color. You can add a gradient, pretty much full customization of the text. And then for a video capture device, pretty much this is where you add your camera. So I currently cannot add a device because I'm recording with it. You just click on device and then whatever camera you have, you just click here. And then if you want to change how the camera looks or something, you just click on customize and then you can change the resolution, the FPS, the video format, pretty much everything you need. And then for a window capture, this is pretty much a display capture or game capture, but pretty much if you want to capture a specific window, you can do that right here. And that is pretty much everything you need to know about OBS. If you guys want to know how to add stuff like Streamlabs OBS or better TTV emote or pretty much anything you want to your stream, just go check out my YouTube channel. I have a ton of videos on there explaining a bunch of different things you can add to your streams. But yeah, other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, please be sure to drop a like, subscribe. And other than that, I'll be seeing you guys later. Peace out.